Good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. We have a great program for you today. Cindy joined us in the kitchen. She's going to teach us how to start juicing, a great way to kickstart your health juicing. It'll be a lot of fun today. But first, let's go to the news. Let's see what's happening out there. Illinois schools propose ban of whole milk. Illinois education officials are proposing new rules to determine what foods can be served in their schools. However, under the new rules, a bag of baked Cheetos would be allowed, while whole milk would not. The new rules focus on the nutritional content of foods rather than broad categories of foods. Some of the recommended, recommended cutoff points for allowed foods include calories from fat should not exceed 35% except for nuts and seeds. Calories from saturated fat should not exceed 10%. That's the whole milk exclusion. And total calories should not exceed 200 for any individual package of food. You know, I think we all applaud the efforts of the Illinois school officials. Obviously, they're trying to improve the health of the Illinois kids. But since when is milk a junk food, and since when is a bag of chips a health food? These details all need to be worked out. But at least our educational experts are looking at the school's nutritional programs. You know, one factor that could be playing a role here is the, the nutritional uh, proposal. Chips sell better than milk, don't they? and they provide a continued source of revenue for our cash-strapped school systems. Bottom line for America's school systems, keep trying. Eventually, we will find a system that assures good nutritional foods for our kids and a steady source of revenue to keep the school systems going. Is soy oil the right trans fat alternative? Snack food manufacturers are taking steps to make your treats a little healthier. Kellogg's is planning to reduce artery-clogging trans fats in some of its products by using a new variety of soybean oil. This type of soy oil will reduce the need for partial hydrogenation in an attempt to keep the taste of your favorite snack while reducing the heart disease-causing trans fat levels. Hydrogenation of vegetable oil is a chemical process that gives food products a longer shelf life and a creamy taste, but it also produces trans fats, which are responsible for over 30,000 deaths due to heart disease every year. Kellogg's acknowledges that their company has moved slower than others to decrease trans fats. You know, the report went on to say that this new soil oil is naturally low in linolenic acid, which allows the giant food company to use the new soybean oil in replacement of the old trans fats, yet it retains many of the desirable features of trans fats. In fact, the demand for this new type of healthy soy oil is so great, it's outpaced the farmer's ability to grow this new soybean. Folks, with this type of response to our healthy food demands, it appears all will be fine, doesn't it, or will it? The one thing left out in this report is that the new Wonder Oil is derived from genetically modified soybeans crossed with hybrid plants. So in essence, the new soy oil comes from genetically modified organisms. We may be jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Who knows what can happen when we mere mortals modify the genetic material of God's creation. Over-the-counter cough syrups, do they make a difference? The American College of Chest Physicians say in recently released guidelines, no, the over-the-counter cough preparations do nothing to help coughs and they may cause significant side effects in adults and actually harm children. Cough is the number one reason Americans seek the advice of a physician and millions take the common cough and cold remedies available at any pharmacy. Experts recommend using older type antihistamines and decongestants to stop post-nasal drip, the most common cause of cough. The report went on to say that a study from 2004 showed that both dextromethorphan and diphenhydramine, those are the most commonly used over-the-counter cough medicines, do absolutely nothing when it comes to relieving a cough. In fact, they work no better than a sugar pill. Now, we've always known these types of medicines don't cure a cough, and now the American College of Chest Physicians assures us they do nothing to even relieve the symptoms of cough. You know, I don't think we've heard the last on this issue. Let's wait six, eight months, and I think we'll be reviewing a news release of a new study that shows these medicines really do work. We'll see how this one plays out. Now, here's a report on a topic that I don't think there's any doubt about this. Juice your way to better health. Once confined to the fringes such as earthy smelling health food stores, juicing with fresh fruit and vegetables has now become mainstream and it couldn't have happened at a better time. Recently, the National Cancer Institute began a campaign urging Americans to do one simple thing, 
eat more fruits and vegetables, and juicing is a great way to enjoy the health benefits provided by those jewels of nature, our fruits and vegetables. Nutritional experts report the average American eats only one and a half serving of vegetables a day when they should be eating five, and one or no servings of fruit when they should be eating at least two. Juicing unlocks fruits and vegetables nutrients, allowing maximum absorption and health benefit. When it comes to juicing, folks, the sky's the limit. You can juice just about any fruit or vegetable. Wheatgrass, kale, dandelion, cucumber, cabbage, celery, parsley, pineapple. If you can think of it, you can juice it. My personal favorite is carrot juice. Boy, that is delicious. If you follow a few basic rules, juicing is a powerful tool to restoring your health. Today on Your Health, Cindy joins us in the kitchen. She's going to teach us how to juice our way to better health. If you don't have your own juicer, folks, pay attention. Today's program will help you get started in the delicious and nutritionous world of juicing.